In today's video, I'm going to be providing you five micro habits to help you lose weight while taking Manjaro, Zepbound, or Terzepatide. Um, if you're new here, I'm Jen and I've been taking Manjaro since March of 2023. I'm down 88 pounds. I've just kicked off a little under two weeks ago, the 75 hard challenge. And I'm loving every second of it. I think the biggest thing I'm loving is my new eating plan. I'll be providing more info on that in the future. But this video is not going to be your typical micro habits that you hear, like use smaller plates, eat your meals slower, drink a glass of water before every meal, or up your protein, all important things. These are actually five tried and true micro habits that I have been incorporating for the past 17 months to be, you know, down 88 pounds while taking Manjaro. And, and if I'm being honest, one of them I started a couple weeks ago and I just thought it would be a great addition that I wanna share with you today. Um, but these are great habits to continue. Um, if you, for some reason, had to stop taking Manjaro or you're on a maintenance plan or the, you gotta lose the last couple pounds to hit your goal weight, I just wanna give you as much encouragement as I can and share with you guys the things that I've changed and hopefully you can make these changes in your routine as well. But first, I highly recommend that uh, if you're trying to lose weight, maybe consult with your doctor. I'm not a medical professional. Um, I just like to share with you the things that have worked for me and what hasn't worked. Um, but I'm gonna start with the most important one. I'm not saving it for last. So the most important micro habit I think is, is keeping a food journal. And it can be extremely beneficial in so many different stages of your weight loss journey. From the beginning, when you hit a stall, when you're near maintenance or in maintenance mode, um, I just, it's a great way for you to take a look at the foods that you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis, just to monitor and be aware. I just, I believe food journal is extremely important. You know, why do you eat when you're hungry? Why do you choose to maybe eat chocolate over fruit? Why do you buy certain foods at the grocery store? These are all questions a food journal can help answer. Um, you'll learn more about your food intolerances and whether you eat more when you're upset or you're happy or you're bored. Like these realizations will allow you to form new eating habits. Also, the Kaiser Center for Health Research, they conducted a study about 1,700 people and they reported that dieters who kept a food journal for six months lost twice as much weight as those who didn't. A detailed account of your eating habits you know, keeps you on track for your weight loss and your goals by holding you accountable for everything that you eat. It can also identify gaps in your diet, maybe some deficiencies in your diet, such as you're not getting enough fiber or protein. Um, it can help, you know, provide your doctor insights into your dietary habits. There's many different ways that you can start a food journal. And I just say, find a method that works for you. There's so many great online tools and apps like MyFitnessPal or Lose It, or maybe you'll like an old school pen and paper. You know, there's a couple different ways that you can go about that as well. I'm gonna put some in the description below from Amazon. I have this particular, you know, nutrition and exercise book that I got for my 75 hard challenge. I just wanted to find something like, you know, that was a little bit better for me to map things out and just be really strategic with my plan. But you could also get something as simple as a standard notepad. Just write the date at the top and then write your foods for the day. Now, how extensive you wanna go from there is really up to you. Maybe it's easier for you to just start out, like I said, with writing down all your foods for that day. See how you're feeling. And then maybe progress to possibly taking a look at your calories or macro or what your breakdowns are. You wanna maybe get something as simple as an in, like an inexpensive food scale. I've had one for years. I will link the one that I have below. I think it's under 10 bucks. But there's so many different ways to go about food journaling and really how extensive you want to be, that's up to you. But I think putting pen to paper of the foods that you're eating to start is such a key element and it can really hold you accountable and can help you lose weight. Now, just remember, you have to write it all down. You have to be honest or this process will not work for you. I absolutely love food journaling. Um, and then backpacking off of that first micro habit of food journaling, I wanna talk about checking added sugar, the second micro habit. This should be a huge part of your food picking process. Checking the added sugar in the products that you're purchasing is going to take 
you a long, long way in your journey. And it might sound tedious, however, added sugars, especially, you know, high fructose corn syrup or those unnatural sugars that are put into our products, it's going to pull you off of your game plan. I think you would be shocked at how many of your so-called healthy foods during the day and night contain so much added sugar. You know, from protein shakes, salad dressings, marinades, so many pra packaged goods that are labeled healthy. They just keep sneaking more and more added sugar into these products and we're not aware of it. You know, eating too many foods high in sugar is going to pull you away from the plan that you've set in place. So just, just take a minute and check. Look at the ingredients. You know, make decisions based off of what you are reading. If there is one micro habit that I've kicked into overdrive, it is this one lately. I was using a, I think I said it in another video, sweet honey barbecue sauce as a marinade. And I didn't read the ingredients because I picked it up because so many people were saying, oh my God, it's amazing. And so finally I was like, oh, I'm kicking off 75 hard, no added sugar. Let me take a look at this marinade. And it had nine grams of added sugar for a teaspoon. That is like, what, a quarter of the recommended daily allowance? And there's no way I was just using one uh, teaspoon, I think it was a tablespoon in it. So, you know, I was like, I can only imagine how much added sugar is that I'm consuming throughout the day with all the foods that I'm eating. So I started taking a closer look at this. And I also think this could be maybe the reason why I had some stalls of this over the summer because I was kind of lax I wasn't food journaling. I wasn't keeping you know, track of my added sugar and making sure it was low or none at all. Um, also remember to look at like almond butters and peanut butters. They sneak sugar and palm oils in there as well. I use one ingredient for, you know, a fresh peanut butter or almond butter and it tastes so much better. It makes a huge difference. You know, it makes a difference in how you feel after you're eating food without all this added sugar because now you've avoided those huge glucose spikes. Um, and it doesn't feel good when you just crash after a sugar rush. The next micro habit is one I talk about all the time. It's sleep. It's something I'm working on all the time. And it's true, you know, being short on sleep really can affect your weight. You know, when you're short on sleep, it's easy to lean on that large Starbucks that you need to get in the morning to get moving. Or you might be tempted to skip your exercise because you're too tired or you know what? You're too tired to make dinner. So you get takeout and now you're going to have trouble falling asleep because you ate too much from your takeout restaurant. Think of it this way. Sleep is like nutrition for your brain. Most people need between seven to nine hours every single night. You know, too little sleep triggers, you know, cortisol spike. This hormone signals your body to conserve energy to fuel for the waking hours. Translation, you're most likely not going to be burning fat overnight. There's so many tips and tricks to getting a better night's sleep. And I know, I know this can be extremely difficult, particularly when, you know, we have so many screens around us from computers, cell phones, TVs, tablets, they lure us in just to stay up a little bit longer. Um, like, let me read one more article. Let me watch a couple more, you know, TikTok videos. Two hours later, you're like, I need to go to bed. But I say the basics are pretty simple. And those are, you know, some of the things that I have done, you know, over the past couple months was create that bedtime ritual. Sometimes I take a shower, sometimes I just do a skincare routine, put on a nice pair of pajamas. I read every night now because yes, that is part of my 75 hard challenge, but I'm enjoying putting my phone away and reading a book. And I find it's really helped me wind down in the evenings. And I've been sticking to a schedule where I'm waking up and going to bed almost around the same time every single day, even on the weekends. I have room darkening curtains so I can suppress the light. Um, these are all very simple tricks that I have done to see my sleep go from five to six hours a night now to seven to seven and a half hours of sleep at night. And I'm also using a metabolic tracker called Lumen. I'm really enjoying, you know, checking out my readings at night and first thing in the morning because my goal is to be able to see, you know, that I'm in a fat burning state overnight and I honestly can tell instantly when I get up in the morning, I'm like, there's no way I'm blowing a one or two on this device. I'm not in a fat burning state because I either didn't sleep well, or maybe I had a little bit slightly larger dinner than I should have had. and went a little bit over my macros. Um, I really get so excited when I see that I'm in a fat burning sleep overnight, but who doesn't want to burn you know, fat while you're sleeping? 
Um, but if you want to check out the Lumen device, I'll put a link in the description and a 10% off discount. But you know, if you're having trouble sleeping, you know, take a look at your environment. Take a look at the things that you're doing before you wind down, you know, in the evenings and start creating a little bit of a bedtime ritual. And I bet couple little changes like putting your phone away an hour before bedtime or reading a book, maybe taking a bath or a new skincare routine. Little things can do so much to help you wind down and can have a dramatic impact on your sleep. And it's not going to impede on your weight loss journey. Now the fourth micro habit revolves around eating a nutritious breakfast. Eating breakfast can support your weight loss in so many ways. Once I started really focusing on eating a nutritional breakfast, really stacking most of my calories, including you know probably 75% of my carbohydrates for the day with breakfast, lunch, and snack, I started to see the scale and you know my weight started to decrease and I was able to break some of the stalls. And now even more recently, I've made this change where I started you know with the 75 hard challenge. I've moved away from my simple protein coffee to a bigger breakfast and I'm seeing that number finally drop on the scale again. You know, eating a nutritious breakfast is going to help boost your metabolism because eating in the morning kickstarts your metabolism after a night of fasting and can actually help your body burn calories more efficiently throughout the day. It also can reduce, you know, overeating, can improve your blood sugar control, you know, support your energy levels because eating a breakfast provides your body with just energy you need to stay active and you know maintain that healthy metabolism. This is going to be one where, I get it, you might think to yourself this isn't for you and that's perfectly fine. I just want to speak from my experience that this has helped me lose weight on Manjaro and, and you know opting now for a more nutritious breakfast that includes a good mix of protein fiber, healthy fats and carbs instead of a processed protein drink has made a drastic difference on how I feel throughout the day. This was such a simple change that I made. You can tweak a couple things first thing in the morning and it will have a major impact on your weight loss journey. And now the last micro habit Number five, the one that I saved for last, the one I'm not sure a lot of us in this space are talking about, especially on GLP ones for weight loss. Um, I don't think you put it on your list of habits to do every day. And quite frankly, it's something I haven't done up until probably the past you know, couple weeks. And that is walk for 10 minutes after your meals. And I hope I didn't lose you here, um, but walking after eating is a simple way to support you know, mental and physical health. And there's so many studies that back up the benefits of walking after eating, like smoother digestion, steadies your blood sugar, increases circulation, can boost your energy, as well as mental clarity. There's so many good benefits to walking you know, after eating that I just started hearing more and more. And I thought, well, let me give this a try. I took a look at my current day to day and you know, usually in the morning I walk my dog after she's done eating and I come back, I have, I'm, I make and then I eat my breakfast and I get ready for my work day. But now I've decided I'm gonna switch it up. While she's eating her breakfast, I'm now eating my breakfast. And then we both go for a walk in the morning and yes, it's a little more than 10 minutes but it checks the box. And then at lunch I now eat prior to my 45 minute afternoon walk I noticed I have so much more energy on that walk and I have been walking all summer. That alone had me buy into this instantly. And like I said, I've been doing it for a couple weeks now. The only area I haven't been able to fix yet is eating after dinner, but that is a work in progress. Um, and in, you know, in your case, it might be going just down the street, going around the block. If you live in an apartment or a condo, going just to walk down the hallways or going to get your, your mail after eating and just come back and, doesn't have to be an hour long walk. And if you can only manage, like manage a couple minutes in the beginning, then that's better than not walking at all. And really it could be as simple as maybe parking further away from the entrance if you go out to lunch or take the stairs instead of the elevator on the way back to your desk if you were in the office. But these are my five micro habits to help you lose weight, you know, if you're on Manjaro, Zepbound, or Terzepatide. I can talk about so many more. I've got a long list of habits, but I just wanted to feature these five today uh, because I didn't want one, this video to be too long. 
And I just want to keep it positive and, you know, provide you some very simple micro habits that doesn't involve going out and buying any supplements, anything super expensive. And, and if you're doing any of these habits already and you've seen success on your weight loss journey, please comment below. Um, but I will see you guys in my next video. I'm going to be uploading a video soon on my first two weeks of doing the 75 hard and my transition from 7.5 to 10 milligrams of Manjaro and some interesting takeaways from going down and then back up a dose. Maybe some appetite suppression pop back in my life. Um, but be on the lookout for that. But I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye.